Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the new episode of uh, Digital Supply Chain Institute Insights in Action. I'm very pleased and honored to have with me today Sasha Koff, who is the DSCI co-chair. Sasha, welcome. Uh, Marco, it's always a pleasure. Looking forward to the conversation. The conversations with Sasha are always dynamic. You know, we, we do cover a lot of things and uh, under her leadership as well, the Institute has focused a lot on several topics which are super important related to how you build a sustainable and resilient supply chain, but not looking only into traditional things which are related to technology, which are related to processes, the right partnerships, but actually focusing on your talent. And, you know, we can start, Sasha, from, you know, like one of the things you, you actually coined around, you know, within DSCI, and that's the, the notion of under quotes, purple people, right? And what are the strategies, you know, companies can implement to attract these kind of people, which you actually possess unique blend of uh, business acumen on one side, technical expertise, and, you know, they carry on a certain culture, which is actually transformational. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. I mean, look, I, I think if we think about the history of, of talent, Traditionally, roles have come up from being either in planning or sourcing or logistics, right, what have you, or manufacturing. Um, and what we're seeing with supply chains, particularly with the, the need to be resilient and to be really focused on the customer's experience, um, and certainly, right, as we've seen, you know, these black swan events that have happened is that we need to call on talent um, that, that really spans a breadth of different experiences, um, different skill sets um, that go beyond, I would say, the traditional kind of vertical uh, supply chain capabilities. So when we think about the leadership and kind of the, the reactions uh, that are required to be resilient and, and to be very customer focused, um, what we're seeing is that organizations need people that have been uh, and have served in roles that are cross-functional in nature. So they have a, 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 a good enough, if you will, understanding of what those roles entail. Um, we see a need for um, individuals who have, as you, you mentioned earlier, some, some business acumen. You know, do they really understand kind of the P&L of the organization and how their decisions might, might impact what that looks like, particularly for organizations that are globally focused and might be focused on, on, on impacting multiple tax environments uh, as well and, and how those decisions play out. Um, and, and certainly, right, as we think about customer experience, um, individuals that are really keyed into what the commercial objectives are of their organization and become really strategic partners to the commercial organization, as opposed to being, I would say, somebody who just served, right, in, in, in the capacity of the supply chain kind of being in the afterthought of, of just execution. Um, you know, supply chain is certainly in a place that really can drive a very significant strategic advantage for the organization as well. And, and so that requires an understanding of what does the marketing world look like for the organization? How does the messaging with customers uh, really prevail in terms of carrying out the company's messaging? Um, and so having individuals that have also potentially taken on roles uh, in a commercial setting or in a financial setting can also be enormously beneficial uh, to the organization as they think about their supply chain talent of, of the future. Thank you very much, Sasha. You, you know, you, you mentioned several uh, really very, very uh, interesting aspects and uh, one of the first being the one that uh, in today's supply chain is not about uh, having, let's say, vertical knowledge, but actually horizontal experience. And uh, I purposely use horizontal experience, not knowledge, is because that links me to the second question. If we have talented people who have the experience, which is horizontal in various different uh, departments of the organization, actually what, what I understood through what you shared today Supply chain can be a profession and, and a career in a way, right? So you, you you won't be seeking for something new because, you know, within supply chain, you have much more opportunities today. But then if you have somebody who is coming from the other side of the organization, you know, from your experience, what kind of training or development programs are most effective in cultivating the skills which are necessary, you know, in order to be a complete uh, uh, professional within supply chain and also having in mind how quickly uh, the technological landscape is changing. 
Yeah. So, you know, I, I think of these as almost two, uh, I'll say, connected and parallel pathways, but, but they're really distinct. Um, so the first one I would say is a page out of the training book that's been around for probably more than 20, 30 years, which are these what I'll call kind of high um, potential employees that you've brought into your company and you've developed, uh, many organizations have developed these rotation programs, right? Which intentionally took somebody within a particular domain, put them into two or three roles in, in a you know two to three year period to give them an opportunity to really expand kind of their knowledge within that, that domain setting. Um, so when you look at multinational uh, organizations or larger organizations, oftentimes they've had a financial development program or an IT development program um, or, or a, a sales development program. Um, and, and I would argue that there isn't really a need for companies to reinvent those programs. I think it's about how how do you intentionally potentially take supply chain organizational resources and put them into those programs that already exist and vice versa, quite frankly, how do you take individuals that are in those other organizations and put them through the supply chain, uh, high potential development opportunities as well. So that that's one piece, right, which is where individuals can get kind of this deeper knowledge of, of the, the acumen that, that exists within that specific domain. The other parallel path that goes along to the side of it, and I think you mentioned it, is the fact that, look, the, the technology and particularly the digital capabilities continue to evolve uh, at a very rapid pace. And in some places, I would say uh, in, in areas where we don't even really quite yet understand how best to harness some of the technologies that are out there. And so on that pathway, I would say, look, it, it really takes... Um, and the encouragement and the support from the leadership team to create space for individuals to, to really, I would say, build a, a development plan and have time and energy to be able to dedicate towards what I would say more of an academic setting of, are they engaged in readings that are coming out of the, the research, uh, either institutions or nonprofits like DSCI, et cetera, uh, to, to be abreast of what are the emerging technologies? Um, are they participating in LinkedIn kind of forums that are talking about these topics where people are playing with this new technology and are they themselves availing themselves of the opportunity to enroll in training courses and things of that nature, whether it's on LLM technologies or it's big data technologies, where they actually are getting some practical experience. Um, and, and look, it just, it takes time and dedication, and I would say a discipline of doing that. Um, and so, you know, as I, I mentioned before, I see these being very, distinct pathways that are parallel, they have to complement one another. Um, but, but I do think we need to make sure that, uh, you know, individuals are focusing their time across both, both pathways as we think about developing, uh, you know, really terrific supply chain talent of the future. This is great, Sasha. And I think one of the key notions which you, which you outlined here is uh, actually that indirectly we need to have patience, right? Because it requires time. And it's not uh, a game which we do in like uh, one minute, but actually it's something we build uh, across the time. And, and from what we know and what we have done with DSEI, all, all the parts of, of transformation we have seen, and especially in supply chain, as you said, they need continuity. So yeah. in that sense, you know, uh, it links us to the next question where I would like kindly to ask you to share with us, you know, from your experience and view, you know, uh, what are, what are the strategies uh, companies can take in order to um, attract, right, on, uh, on one side, the new talent, uh, retain the current talent, or, you know, uh, let's say cross-train the talent and then, you know, help them understand that, as I shared uh, in the previous um, uh, reflection, share the notion that supply chain in today's world is actually a career opportunity and how that can be linked as we call it in DSEI to a constellation of value in supply chain. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great question. And um, look, you know, I'll, I'll take a, a page out of my own, my own background, which I was beyond fortunate to have a, a gentleman by the name of Bob Salerno kind of be my sponsor early on in my, my career at J&J. &J. And, and I remember sitting across the table from him and him looking at me and saying, look, supply chain of the future is going to need very different talent than we have today. And you're going to have to be very purposeful in, in how you think about what the roles you're taking on, how you think about the mentorships and how 
you think about your um, network of, of leaders that you're, you're tapping into um, and that your career path is not going to be linear. It is going to have to take a lot of what I would call sideways steps in terms of being able to learn those experiences and be willing to embrace those sideways. And in some places, maybe even a backward step, right, in terms of title and things of that nature to get the skills that are needed. So if I, if I use that experience really as a, um, a, a kind of a, a, a framework for how companies might think about their own talent and how they develop their own talent, I think it's about are you really being purposeful, both in terms of how you think about sponsorship of the individuals that are in your company? Do you have people in very senior leadership roles that understand what this kind of multi-potentialite or purple people mean? Um, and are they in a position to be able to help sponsor and move people from one functional area to another with ease? Um, and with that, right, are you also being really purposeful in terms of how you think about the mentorship that happens as individuals are going into those roles, right? Because most of the time people are gonna come into that role with either lacking, you know, specific skill in terms of the depth of the knowledge that's required, or it may be a specific technical skill that's lacking. Um, so are you really being purposeful too, in terms of how you're thinking about the mentorship that, that goes in, into, into that role? Um, so I think that's from a company perspective. I think the other piece is, look, we know research tells us time and time again, people don't leave companies, they leave bad bosses. Right. So, you know, we talk about attracting and retaining talent. I think we have to be really, really critical around some of the soft skills that happen as we think about these sponsors, we think about these mentors, we think about the, I'll say the reporting line management that these individuals are, are reporting into. Um, is there a real sense of what I would call servant leadership that happens within these roles that people feel like they are in fact growing? Um, and right, it's no secret that I think all of us, regardless of where we are in our career, we want to make sure our work is really meaningful. It's not just checking a box. So how are we ensuring that we're connecting with that individual and, and that the person really does feel a full sense of accomplishment, not just checking a box? What are the, the protocols that are being put in place to, to really check that, that, um, that, that process is, is in fact in place? So those are kind of the three things as I think about retention, attraction, rotation, et cetera, that are really required. Sponsorship, mentorship, and then really about that critical line manager. Are, are we really connecting in the right way? Thank you for uh, that, Sasha. It definitely resonated with me that, you know, today's actually step number one in this area is not trying to uh, attract, retain, or develop talent, but actually looking first in what we have in yeah. a sense of leadership. And, you know, are those leaders ready to really commit and build the next generation of leaders with a clear purpose? Yeah. And, you know, it really elevates the, the way of thinking to the next level. Of course, there will be focus on results. Of course, there will be focus on PNL. But the key thing is, do we have leaders who have, you know, who are purposeful and who are ready to uh, give back and create the next generation? As you were fortunate, you yeah. know, have at the beginning of of your career, and that actually closes the whole loop. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sasha, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, thank you very much for sharing uh, your insights, uh, which are always insights in action. Uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation with you because talent is a topic which will always remain. And uh, I think it's even quicker in change and transformation than just technologies, which people sometimes think, you know, with technology and process, we will resolve things. But actually, without the people, we cannot have a purpose and we ha cannot have the, the right relationships with those we cooperate with. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, and we, we, we look forward into next conversation with you once the story of talent keeps on evolving uh, in the direction that we can learn even more insightful things. It was great. Thanks, Marco. Appreciate it. Thank you all. This was another DSEI Insights in Action. We look forward sharing with you new insights, which we will come across with uh, all the experts we collaborate with.